yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick flying solo. So the Warriors, they have tied up the series with the Los Angeles Lakers. They smacked the Lakers 127-100 at Chase Center in a game that they, of course, had to have. And it was a game that, as opposed to after losing game one, to the Kings, you know, this one, you had to have it, but it never really, I mean, there's some doubts, you know, cause you never know with this Warriors team, but it never really felt like the Warriors were going to be overmatched, right? I talked about this in the last episode, watching the Warriors play the Lakers in game one, it was like, okay, they just, they just lost. You know, they never looked like they were overmatched. It never felt like the Lakers were, quote unquote, this dominant team, this better team, someone that was just going to steamroll the Warriors. That being said, you know, we had all, myself, everybody else, I mean, we all knew from that Lakers game that the Warriors need to go small. I talked about that a lot in the last episode. And subsequently, it was pretty clear that everybody else thought the same thing because at the end of game one, the Warriors made that 14-0 run that closed the gap. They made it by running, getting a lot of transition baskets, and playing small. So you felt like they should and that they were going to do that in this one. First off, though, Jamichael Green started in place of Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney was a little bit under the weather. I guess. So Kerr went with Jamichael Green. And when that announcement went out uh, across social media, we were all cracking jokes about it. I was like, oh, wow. Either way, it's going to be really brilliant or it's going to be kind of a disaster. And uh, it was neither, but it was definitely a positive overall. Jamichael Green, just to get it out the way, he played really well. You know, he played really well, didn't play a ton. Again, it's not really about who starts. It's about who finishes games and plays most minutes usually, right? So to Michael Green only played 13 minutes. In the first half, he only played six, but he was six for nine from the field overall. Three for six from three, which is huge, especially when the Lakers have been sagging off of Kevon Looney and Draymond Green and crowding the paint. So at least that forced the Lakers to at least step out a little bit further on defense and made the paint a little bit more accessible. So he only had one rebound, but he had two assists, 15 points, plus five. Great. I'll take it. You know what I mean? So props to to Michael Green, or as I called him, after the game, Jamichael Porter Jr. <laughs> Rough season for Jamichael Green, but he did pretty well in this one. So that was a pleasant, pleasant surprise. Clay Thompson finally had another good shooting game. He'd had three bad shooting games in a row. Uh, he'd been shooting well through five games against the Kings. I believe the stats were 21 points, 48 from the field, 41 from three. But then game six, uh, game seven, and then game one against the Lakers uh, were pretty pretty inefficient nights for him. But in this one, 31 minutes, 11 for 18 from the field, eight for 11 from three. And they really needed that, especially at the start. Plus 28 on the night, 30 points, three boards, one assist. You love to see that from Clay. You know, he has been much more consistent in uh, this calendar year since the end of December up until the end of the season. But we know that he can get a little streaky at this point. But overall, he's solid. And this is really, really what they needed from him because he was carrying them in the first half. If it wasn't for him, this game would have been much closer and the psychology, the rhythms of this game. I mean, if you look at the box score in the second and third quarters, the Warriors outscored the Lakers 84-47, right? The Lakers had 
uh, won the first quarter 33-26. But, you know, first quarters are just first quarters, kind of feeling it out, seeing how, uh, you know, the other team is playing you, seeing what your guys got. But to me, I always felt that going into this one, you know, the Lakers, they wanted one game. And that's why I talked about this after game one. They went so hard after game one because that's the one where they had the rest advantage. LeBron and AD are feeling as good as they're going to feel in the next two weeks. So uh, go get it. And then once they got it, it was like, all right, let's see how game two goes. And to me, from the Warriors perspective, it was like, break open this game early. You know, if you can break it open in the third or by the end of the third, you can potentially just get Darvin Ham, coach of the Lakers, to rest AD and LeBron for game three because it's only one day off because they're going to play on Saturday. So I was like, you know, hoping the Warriors would just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and the Lakers would capitulate at some point uh, early on. And, you know, that's kind of what happened. So uh, you love to see that because then you could also rest your guys a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, if you look at the starters, Draymond only played 28, Wiggins 30, Steph 30, Clay 31, Looney off the bench 12. So those guys are going to get some rest as well heading into uh, Los Angeles on Saturday. Like I said, a big adjustment was for the Warriors to play small. And one thing that goes hand in hand with the Warriors going small is putting Draymond on Anthony Davis because Draymond is just a better overall defender and more mobile, savvier. And, you know, he is somebody that has always played dudes bigger than him really well. And that was definitely effective because, you know, you want to be physical with these guys. And I think... You know, that is really important because you want to wear Anthony Davis down, right? Again, Mr. Glass. So if he's going to just get easy baskets or play defense when no one's challenging him, go untouched on both ends of the court, then, you know, you're not doing your job. So I think that Draymond putting him on there. Like that's the beauty. I mean, that's what Draymond has been doing for the last 10 years, playing small ball center more effectively than anyone has ever played small ball center in the history of the game, right? That's what separates uh, these warriors from pretty much the Nelly warriors is that they actually have a guy who can play defense against bigs. And then they also have guys who can play defense in general throughout the years. So Draymond, 5 for 10 from the field, 11 boards, 9 assists, uh, 11 points. So almost a triple-double in 28 minutes. And so I think this is basically the strategy that the Warriors have moving forward, right? Like there are no extra rest days. And so if you found this at the end of the first game and it worked well in this one, it's like, hey, just keep pushing, keep pushing and getting buckets. The Warriors, they outscored uh, the Lakers in transition 17 to seven. And then also, you know, by going small and also by having Looney come off the bench, right? You're giving up some potential rebounds there, but the Warriors gang rebound, they really attacked the boards and they out rebounded the Lakers 55, 40. And on offensive boards, they also out rebounded them 13 to nine. So all these metrics, all these things, stats, it's what you need to beat this Lakers team that is so much bigger than you. Uh, the Warriors, they had eight more fouls than the Lakers, which is, you know, it is what it is. But in terms of free throws, almost even. Lakers 10 for 17, Warriors 10 for 16. And again, the Warriors shot really, really well from three. That's especially because of Clay. Uh, they shot 50%, 21 of 42. And, you know, 38 assists, right? 30 is the magic number for this Warriors team. And they got beyond that. And, you know, again, the 55 boards, that's nuts. That's crazy. Another thing I talked about was that the Warriors, you know, in game one, they weren't getting into the paint. And when they did, they weren't challenging 
guys at the bucket, especially Anthony Davis. And this time they did. They had more points in the paint, 48 to 42, than the Lakers. And again, that's what you're going to have to see. You're going to have to be aggressive. You're going to have to force the issue. And you're going to have to run on these guys to constantly have them moving. You know what I mean? So, and in that respect, they got three fouls on Anthony Davis, you know, before halftime. And he ended up with three fouls largely because he sat the whole fourth quarter. But still, that's foul trouble early on that he wasn't in in game one. So good on the Warriors for checking all the boxes pretty much on the adjustments that they needed to make. Now, in game three, it's going to be different. Right, the Warriors bench won't play as well. Benches don't travel as well. Benches play better at home. So some of these guys on the Lakers who played well in Game One didn't play so well in Game Two. They'll be back. You know what I mean? And it's a question of who on the Warriors bench will be consistent, will stand out. Will it be Jamichael Green? I mean, there's a chance Jamichael Green starts again because if that worked this time, you know, Steve Kerr might stick with it. Uh, Will it be Moses Moody? And Moses Moody. I mean, let's talk about him for a second. Still, you know, like it's a joke, but I was like, oh, you know, who would have thunk that Moses Moody would have magically learned how to play basketball good enough for Steve Kerr to not play so much in the regular season, but then play key minutes in the playoffs. (laughs) I'll never, never fully understand how after playing in the Western Conference Finals last season, how he fell down the charts. You know, I, I know... I know that uh, some of it was he wanted a bigger role and he was behind guys like Ty Jerome, Anthony Lamb, whatever, Dante DiVincenzo at the guard spot. But he's there now and he better not next season (laughs) fall back uh, to the end of the bench. But he played 26 minutes, three for nine from the field, two for three from three. Part of those, you know, three for nine – in garbage time, he was playing and he, you know, got a little bit more in his bag and he missed some wild layups and stuff like that. So overall, he played well, seven boards, two assists, one block, 10 points, plus four on the night. So Moses Moody, revelation. You know what I mean? Very, very impressed. He's providing the kind of play that we thought he would, you know, that we saw last Western Conference Finals against the Mavericks. So it's good that he's out there and he's earning his minutes for sure. Right. I mean, like Jordan Poole only played 16 minutes, three for six, oh for two from three, didn't get to the line, four boards, three assists, plus eight, but uh, five fouls, six points, you know, because of the foul trouble he sat, but also Steve Kerr trusting Moody a lot. He's been stable and he's held up on both ends of the court and honestly, like he's not trying to do too much. He's doing just enough and he's hustling. He's hustling out there and he's getting rebounds, seven boards. That's pretty impressive, you know? And that's something that John Kaminga has not been doing as well towards the end of the season. And Kaminga got some garbage time minutes, 10 minutes, only one for four, hit uh, his one three pointer, three points, two boards, one assist. So, you know. I don't know if Kaminga will get off the bench in this series. Talked about how it's a good matchup for him, and it'd be nice to see if he can add a little bit of pressure to the rim, but maybe he's just so pushed down the line and out of rhythm and Kerr doesn't want to risk it, especially on the road. I always figured that if he was going to play, if he was going to get out there, it was going to be in the first two games, like not garbage time minutes, but if he's going to get into the rotation for for a look, it would be – not on the road. So unless there's an injury, I don't see him playing much in the next couple of games in Los Angeles or unless game three is so catastrophic that Steve Kerr has to readjust once again. Curious to see what rookie coach Darvin Ham has up his sleeve in terms of adjustments. To him, it might just be like, okay, you know, we got blown out. We just have to focus more. And he rested his guys, his main guys a little bit so that they'll be more ready to attack and have more energy in their legs and all that stuff in game three. The Warriors, yeah, they just need to get one in LA to get home court advantage back. So that's the give and take of 
each game in these uh, seven game series, right? It's like all the pressure is on, you know, the Warriors to protect home court. And then once they get the split at home, it's like, oh, all the pressure is on the Lakers to defend their home court. And they have the advantage in this thing. But all of a sudden, if they lose one at home, then they're back at a home court disadvantage. So just get one. And again, keep running, keep running, keep running. That's all I got to say. The Lakers have some young dudes, but their best guys, one's 38, one breaks down all the time. So take advantage of that. And hey, the longer the series goes, the more likely they'll break down even further. And yeah, the Warriors, they played seven games and they have some older dudes, but you know, again, they managed their minutes in this one and Steph is in the best shape of his life all the time, every year. And Draymond and Clay are healthy and they're good. So, you know, even though Clay has an injury history, it's not like Anthony Davis, right? Where every time he goes down, you know, the whole <laughs> arena like gasps, you know, holds their breath just to see if he's going to come back into the game at all. So, yeah, this game, I liked it. Liked what I saw. They did everything I hoped they would do in terms of adjustments. And now we're back to both teams getting one day of rest. So keep running at them. That's it. Just keep running, play small, play fast. Maybe it took a little time for the Warriors to adjust from the Kings in less than 48 hours to the Lakers. But now I always said that the Kings looked better than the Lakers. Lakers, you know, maybe not that tough to figure out. You know, maybe not as complex as the Kings to figure out here. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's it.